Hello, and welcome to my video showcasing Mousy Pound Stardew Valley Predictor Tool. I will be briefly going over each of the tool section's purposes and how to use them, and then show some in-game examples. I'll leave a link to the tool in the video description down below, so make sure to check that out if you are interested. In the About section here, there is a nice description of how the tool itself works. Basically, for Stardew to randomly generate all of the in-game events, it uses a random number generation seed. The seed can be specified when you start your game, and will determine many of the game's random events. This seed is equivalent to what's called your in-game ID, which can be found right here. So this first one is your farm name or farmer's name, and then it's followed by the seed, or called the ID number. So the predictor will take your save file and look at the seed as well, and use this to track all of your progress and predict all sorts of random events. We'll be taking a brief look at all of the tool sections today. So we will start by adding our save file. So it gives a nice description of how to do this, but we'll be clicking on the choose file to start. Then we'll type in percent app data percent to go to our roaming app data. Then click on the folder called Stardew Valley, click on the folder called saves, and then our file should be there named something like this. So we'll do that real quick. And this is what mine's called. I'm using seed eight, which is why my ID is eight right there. And you can see, it gives a brief overview of some of this stuff. So your game ID eight, that's my seed. What version, the name, what day I'm on. I'm on day 20 of winter currently. How many geodes, how many times you've enchanted and the deepest mine level you've made it to. Let's go ahead and take a step outside. So this is the farm for my min max series. If you are interested in watching that and haven't yet, I will leave a link in the description. So go ahead and check that out if you are interested. We are gonna go ahead and grab some geodes and then head on over to Clint's to take a look at the geode predictor. We have arrived at Clint's. Let's go ahead and take a look at the geode predictor now. So we'll start by talking to him, opening up the process geodes button, and geodes take 25G to process each of them. And they can have an assortment of different minerals, artifacts, or whatever inside of them. So you can see that Omni Geode gave me a calcite. So why is this? Let's take a look at the predictor. The predictor is able to actually predict everything we get from opening geode. So if you can look right here at the Omni Geode, this is the current geode I am on, there was a calcite from it. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Let's look at the magma geodes now. And if we open a magma geode, since this is the geode after it, we should be getting a star shards from it. So let's go ahead and test that out and open a magma geode. And sure enough, we do get a star shards. So we'll do this a few more times and again, whatever geode you use, it works. So let's go ahead and open a few more Omni geodes. So if you look at the next four, we've already opened the calcite and the star shard. So the next geode on the list will get stone from no matter what type of geode it is. And after that, if we open some more Omni geodes, we would get opal, then gold ore, and then coal. So let's go ahead and test that out. Sure enough, we get the 10 stone, and we get the opal, and we get the gold ore, and we finally get the coal. So let's just try one more time. This time we're gonna open one of each type. So we should be on geode number 348 right now. So if we open a regular geode, we'll get a malachite, and then frozen geode would give us a frozen tier. Magma Geode would give us 5 Copper Ore. The next one is a Petrified Slime from the Omni Geode. Then we would get a Rusty Cog from the Artifact Trove. And finally a Mango Sapling from the Golden Coconut. Let's go ahead and test this out. So sure enough, we get a Malachite. And then a Frozen Tear. The Magma Geode gives us 5 Copper Ore. The Omni Geode gives us a Petrified Slime. The Artifact Trove gives us a Cog, and then the Golden Coconut gives us the Mango Sapling. So as you can see, the Geode Predictor predicts exactly what will be from each of these. One more thing, the Geode Crusher is a new item in the 1.5 update. Uh, in the description you can see it's 
pretty similar, but it's offset by one. So if you're interested in that, you can do a little bit of testing yourself. I won't be really going over that since it's not really important for us. We're just focused on opening the geodes ourselves. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at Krobus's predictor. So the vendor predictors work pretty much all the same. There's one for the traveling cart, there's one for Sandy's shop, there's one for Pierre's shop, and there's one for Krobus. These all predict their special items, so Krobus, you can see here, Saturday Winter 20, that's today, we will be getting a complete breakfast from him. He will have one in stock, so let's take a look and confirm this to be true. And sure enough, he has complete breakfasts for us, along with his usual stock. Let's go ahead and take a look at the predictor again. So if you take a look, you can scroll through previous weeks and future weeks as well as the years to see what he will be selling in the future. And you can also do a search if you want a specific item. So for example, let's go ahead and search complete breakfast. So I'm gonna go back a few weeks and then search complete breakfast, search, and it'll show us the soonest day which he will sell that item. This works pretty much the same for Sandy's rotating clothes stock and Pierre's and the Joja Mart's wallpaper options. And same thing with the traveling cart. So you can see here, traveling cart, it'll show you pretty much all the items. So you can also start your search from spring one and We'll take a look and search up Nautilus Shell. If we then hit search, you'll find that um, the traveling cart will sell the Nautilus Shell on Sunday, Fall 21, Year 1, and also sometime in Year 2. So that was important in my mid-max run because the Nautilus Shell is the limiting factor for completing the community center. So this tool is very helpful in seeing if my seed in my seed if the traveling cart will end up selling the nautilus shell so that's a useful way to use the traveling cart portion of this tool while we're here let's go ahead and take a look at the night events so this basically just shows you any sort of night events that can occur like the witch or the meteor and of course the guaranteed earthquake that happens summer too no matter what if you look in the future you can see there's a crop fairy there's another meteor a strange capsule so It'll basically tell you what events can occur on what nights. Then the crane game is for the movie theater. That just shows you what days a crane game will be in use. Garbage cans. This will show you what days you can find what in whose garbage can. So there's a chance to find these items. It's not always guaranteed, but there's usually a good chance you'll find those items. The enchant section will tell you what enchantment you'll get in the forge from each tool or weapon and the mine chests are if you randomize your mine chest it'll show you what you get from each of them there's also a predictor for the gem birds at the island it'll tell you what color bird is in what section and then the winter star it'll tell you who is your secret gift going to and who you'll receive a secret gift from and i think the only thing that i haven't really covered now is the trains so let's go ahead and look at that basically this just tells you what days will have a chance of having a train so you can see today there's a chance of a train being at 1 50 p.m so finally we're going to be taking a look at the mine so let's actually head there in game as you can see we have arrived at the mine so let's go ahead and take a look at the predictor again and we'll see exactly how it works so Let's go ahead and click on the mines. And if you look here, we can predict a few things, including the mushroom floors, the monster floors, the infested floors, the quarry floors, and then for Skull Cavern, you could also predict the dinosaur floors, although they are not guaranteed. So today, we'll start with the mushroom floors. Since today is um, winter 20th, we know that there is a mushroom floor on floor 111 and 113 in the mine. So Let's go ahead and confirm this. So we'll head to the elevator, go to 110, and then drop down to floor 111. And sure enough, there's a mushroom. Let's take another look, see if there's more. And sure enough, there are plenty of mushrooms for us. This is definitely a mushroom floor. The predictor was right. 
So let's go ahead and move past this real quick. And we have arrived on floor 113, which is indeed another mushroom floor. Purple mushrooms and red mushrooms both sell for a decent price, so this is a pretty effective way to make some easy money. Although if you return to these floors, there won't be mushrooms on them, so you have to keep that in mind. You can only use it once per day. The next thing we'll look at is the monster floor, so we can see that floor 49 should have a monster floor. I went ahead and skipped down to floor 48, and now you can see we are on floor 49, and it sure enough is a monster floor. So, in my min-max run, this was super useful for farming dust sprites. I looked at the predictor, saw what floors would have a monster floor, and would farm the dust sprites on that floor. We can actually go back to the spring of this year, and you can see that on the days like 18 through 21, sort of when I did the dust sprite farming, there were monster floors, so I did take a look at that in order to utilize those. So next, we're going to take a look at the infested floors. We'll go ahead and take a look at floor 16, since we can get there pretty quickly, and the infested floors differ from the monster floors because they are just really filled with slimes and they have a different appearance. So let's go ahead and confirm that for ourselves. We'll go to floor 15. Mine straight down to floor 16, and it is indeed an infested floor. So you can see here, it's filled with slimes. And these floors are honestly not very useful. It is nice to know what floors they are on so that you can actually avoid them. Because I don't really find much use out of the floors, unless you want to farm slimes. Then it can definitely be useful, but other than that, I tend to avoid these floors. If you remember from the predictor, floor 19 was a quarry level, so let's go ahead and confirm it, and it indeed is a quarry floor. These floors, not too useful in my opinion either. The skulls do drop some bone artifacts if you're looking for those, but other than that, I tend to avoid those floors. And with that, we have covered each of the sections of the predictor. It is a great tool to use to help out with maximizing your day in Stardew Valley, and I would not be able to do nearly as well in my min-max run without it. I am pretty happy with my min-max run so far. We have been able to achieve my goal of unlocking Skull Cavern on day 17, and then earning enough money to afford 640 starfruit seeds on the first of summer. I will be continuing that series and trying to complete the perfection goals as soon as possible while I continue to try to make as much profit as possible. If you are interested in how I do all of this, consider checking out my spring recap video, which is a nice overview of the run and my month of spring. I'll leave a link to that video and the playlist in the description below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.